guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Marissa Explains It All. Today I am showing you how I built my custom fireplace insert uh, for those that maybe want a baby proof or like I did, or maybe just want to use your fireplace as like bench seating and make it more comfortable for guests. So if, if that's interesting to you, stay tuned and I'll be right back. So I've broken this video up into three parts, and that will be planning your project, what materials and tools you'll need, and then uh, assembly of the actual fireplace insert. And so you can kind of skip through and find the part that you're looking for, um, but I just wanted to start out with just a general uh, caveat that I am building something that is custom to mine, and so of course the measurements will be different for yours, and I am also building one that really fits every single contour and crevice of my fireplace because I really wanted it to look like a custom built-in piece. Um, now this makes it, m I would say, much harder because you have to cut more um, facets and you know uh, edges and then you also have a hard much harder time recovering when you go to actually recover the cloth um, trying to fit all those contours so it is much easier if you are just like in a hurry you don't want a big weekend project you just want to get it out of the way you can absolutely just make yourself a square and that way you don't have to cut special edges you don't have to really like measure and get all the facets perfect you can just cut yourself a big square recover it and be on your way that doesn't look, you know, as um, maybe custom, but it's certainly like easier, like I said, to do that. So, but I'm going to show you what I did and you can kind of um, decide based on there what you'd like to do. So let's dive into planning. So this is the fireplace that we are looking to cover. It's fairly low profile, not very high. Um, so far we're for safety, we're just using these black foam mats, but they're a little bit unsightly and they're not a permanent solution. They are kind of a trip hazard if you catch your foot on the edge. And we wanna do something a little more custom, a little nicer looking. So first I wanted an idea of what exactly I'm doing. And I don't like the idea of just doing straight across. I do like a contoured look that goes around all of the edges, all the trim pieces and all the little facets and straight edges of my fireplace. And so that's kind of what I want to do. And so I did start just by drawing this out. It always helps to kind of get a visual first. And so I drew just a rough sketch of all of my fireplace contours and edges um, just to get the uh, general layout and then started measuring. And so first I measured the length, which is a little over 67 inches. Uh, and then just kind of marked that out. And then I went ahead and measured from top to bottom, which is around 20 inches um, to kind of tall. And then I went ahead and measured all of the other little facets, um, just tiny little pieces, all the straight edges. I did skip over the trim piece because when I'm going for the trim, I'm gonna use a contour gauge tool. So I didn't need to measure that, but certainly all of the straight pieces up and across. So that's what I ended up with, all the measurements right out. When it comes to materials, you'll first need a board. I did use this from Lowe's, it was about $16, and it was just a sanded plywood. And this worked great, it was um, thin and lightweight. And I need some foam. So I'm using an old foam topper, kind of memory foam mattress. It's about two inches thick. And so this was really nice because they are quite pricey if you have to buy it. So maybe try something that you have at home. Um, otherwise, they have a one inch foam for $25 a yard, which again is quite pricey if you need a few yards to cover um, the fireplace. Um, they have this other project foam at Joanne Fabrics that's an inch thick. And um, if not, if you're looking to do it on a dime, you might be able to actually do this with a an eggshell kind of foam top mattress topper and maybe get like a Full, maybe just kind of measure it out but these are $20 and you can certainly buy them in other increments other than one inch they have two three and four next you'll need some fabric and so I use this linen look um, outdoor heavy-duty fabric and actually um, thought this was really you know pretty in this color gray and I spilled some water on it and found out that it's actually um, semi I guess like waterproof <laughs> and like the water beaded right up on it which I thought was great for babies with spit up you'll need some contour gauges um, if you're doing something around the trim again you don't need this if you're just doing your fireplace straight across you'll need that and a tape measure and then to make yourself a little template I either use parchment paper or tin foil to make myself just a little template you'll need some glue to glue your uh, wood pieces together if you're doing a front piece to your fireplace so I'm using this crazy glue wood glue and then a staple gun and some heavy-duty staples half inch thick should do just fine and then you'll need some power tools to actually cut the wood and so I'm using a few different saws here because it's what we have so first I laid out a template. Now you can do this with tin foil and uh, this kind of helps you mold to the shape and contours and just kind of, you know, cut and press down where you need to just to get an idea of what the contours look like. And you can just trace this onto your board. Uh, just use several pieces of foil and just uh, gives you like a nice little outline. Um, but I wanted to do a different way. I, I liked the idea of the parchment paper. And so I took uh, my roll and just kind of rolled it out to the whole length of the fireplace and cut it exactly to shape. And then I started because I'd already 
measured, um, started measuring uh, using my little diagram to mark on the parchment paper where I had measured. And so if my paper said two inches down and then four inches across, that's what I measured. So I marked it all out on my parchment paper. And then here's where I used my contour gauge. It wasn't deep enough to use it straight on. So I did have to tilt it at an angle, but just kind of pressed it all in and it, it kind of, you know, molds to the contours of the edges. And I just traced those out on my parchment paper. And it is a handy little tool just to get semi close, not exact. And then I just kind of continued measuring um, just all of the little edges and pieces. And I was uh, very precise. You want to be very precise with your measurements uh, because the last thing you want is for your board not to fit. And so once you're done, cut out your template and test it. Try it up against your uh, fireplace and see where you might need to make some adjustments. And I found that I, I did best when I taped this. It's actually a little bit loose when I was trying to kind of play with it. So certainly tape it and you can cut any edges that you think are a little off or just, you know, not going to work. So once I had it all laid out, I went ahead and put it on my board and started just tracing the outline of the parchment paper just to make sure I had a nice um, template traced onto the wood. And now here's what it looks like all cut. And then I needed to measure the front piece because I wanted to certainly um, cover the front. My camera was not wanting to focus, but I just measured the height of my uh, fireplace. It was only a few inches. And I marked that off all the way down the line and drew myself a straight line so that my husband could cut a nice line. So here he is using a circular saw, I believe, um, just to cut some of the larger pieces and edges. Um, this was easy just to kind of get that um, out of the way. And he cut all those. And then he used some different saws to get the details. Um, I think he used a Dremel Ultra saw for just some of the straighter edges, like finer detailed straighter edges. And uh, this worked pretty well. And then for some of the contours and edges that were harder, that a scroll saw would probably be your best bet, but I don't know how many people have one of those. So we're using this reciprocating saw and just kind of hacking away at it. And I didn't expect it to be perfect, but it looked great. Uh, and then he just gave it a quick sand and then we tested it out and here it is. It looks great against the fireplace. I think it turned out really well. And then it was time to attach this front piece on the front. I laid it out on the ground and I used my wood glue, a uh, quick setting wood glue to to try and um, just you know use a thick line and I was intending to kind of hold it there because it cures in six minutes which I was really impressed at and one side really worked pretty well um, but I quickly found that I was not going to be able to do this method even just holding it for six minutes but um, I could have probably done that but I found that I couldn't use this very well because my wood was bowed and it didn't uh, line up it wasn't exactly flat so there's like gaps and again it was my camera was not wanting to focus here but there are pretty large gaps so it didn't make contact to even like the wood to even or glue to even stick so and then here's the bowing where it's not really straight so i got like an industrial glue gun which i already had and i went ahead and just glued this in place to help the um, glue stick and it actually helped fill in those large gaps kind of like caulking and once that was on it was time to do the foam and so i laid it across the edge of my foam and just traced it with a sharpie um, to know exactly what to cut um, i used a pair of sharp fabric scissors here but you actually can use a bread knife to make an easier cut for some of the straight cuts that was a little tip that i didn't um, follow <laughs> i like to attach the foam so i just use a smaller glue gun i was too lazy to go get the big one downstairs so i used a small one and just kind of lightly attached it so it's easier to work with and so i just kind of rolled it up and i would glue a little bit and then roll it down and then glue it and roll it. And then here's where I actually measured um, the front piece and cut my foam before I realized that I didn't cut it tall enough to accommodate like the, the rest of the foam. And if you were to do that and not go all the way up, it would make a gap. So definitely don't do that. <laughs> Measure your foam all the way up for the project until the top. And this is what it looked like kind of tacked on with a hot glue. And then it was time to recover. So my fabric was quite wrinkly. I just used this little garment steamer to um, just, you know, hold it up and steam out the wrinkles. I actually spilled some water on the end there, but I am just spilling all kinds of water today <laughs> but the wrinkles came out pretty well there I continued on with the rest of it and laid it out and it looks a little bit wrinkly still just because it's sitting on top of a shag rug and I brought it up to the edge of my fabric because I didn't I had excess um, I ended up getting two and a half yards for my fireplace but I had a lot of excess um, and so I went ahead and just cut off some now I actually cut uh, a decent amount of extra here. I didn't really need all of that, um, but I like to be generous with the amount just in case because you, you can always cut more off, but you can't add more on. 
<laughs> so I went ahead and folded it over and just took my staple gun and went every few inches along the inside corner. I started with the longest side first so that I could pull, um, pull from the other side and put tension on it. So that's what it looks like with my little stained water spot. And um, I went ahead and started putting tension on it uh, and just kind of trying to pull and staple. And then I realized that I wasn't really pulling enough. And so I didn't want the top to be loose and I realized there could be more uh, give and you really kind of want it to be tight. And so I realized that I needed to take some staples out and I just was kind of testing to see how loose it was and you can't really see here, but it didn't feel like very tight. So I enlisted some help from my mom to go ahead and pull tight and then uh, she helped while I stapled. So I did have to take it out. So that's just my advice. And also again, I'm using way too much uh, fabric probably. You really could get away with like an inch or two clearance and I used like six inches. <laughs> So I flipped it over just to check it out and here was the hardest part. This is the hardest part of the entire project was actually doing the edges and the contours. And so I did actually tack the edges, the side pieces first and then had to work on the corners. And so the corners were really difficult, like I said, just because it's contoured. Um, and I began just kind of starting to cut away some of the excess fabric. My mom was just telling me I have a lot of excess fabric here. So I carefully cut like piece by piece and just tried to kind of fold and tuck and see what it looked like. And this, I am sure my Aunt Cheryl is going to just like laugh at me so hard because she's been recovering furniture for years and I'm sure this is not the way that we were supposed to do it. And she could have done a way better, more fabulous job. So Aunt Cheryl, I am so sorry. I probably butchered this project, but um, we did as best we could because we are certainly not professional upholsters. Um, so I just kind of tried to tuck it under and I stapled it um, pretty firmly just to make sure that it was in place and then nothing would lift up uh, so I tried to, to do that. I ended up with maybe two tucks on that corner and then we worked on the more difficult corner and again this was really hard I just had a lot of excess fabric which was getting in the way so I did take my scissors and try to make sure that I um, only cut maybe an inch or two like an inch maybe in from the, the edge of the board so I was feeling the edge of the board and making sure that I didn't cut in too far um, because the last thing you want to do is cut off too much and so I don't really have a good advice for how to do this maybe you could look up how to professionally like upholster things um, or corners and edges and contours but it was fairly difficult as you can see we're trying to figure out how to do it and I knew you had to sort of cut like after you cut the excess off you have to cut um, a, maybe a diagonal shape into the corner um, just to give yourself a little bit of like wiggle room to ease the fabric in and so I just ended up doing that um, it you know wasn't perfect but I ended up making one pleat there and then just stapling that down and then for the rest of it again just kind of working with it as best I could cutting off excess fabric where I could without going too far tucking it, trying to pull it tight and covering it. So thankfully no one sees this side cause it is just not pretty. <laughs> But finally we were done and we tested it against the fireplace and we were so happy with how it turned out. It looks great. It's not exactly, uh, you know, tight to the trim necessarily, but I think we got as close as we could with the power tools that we had and with the foam um, and the fabric tank pulling on it. I don't know that we could have gotten much closer, um, but it does look like a nice custom piece and it is certainly keeping my little guy safe and it's really soft and great to sit on as well. So it adds extra seating. So that's everything. Hopefully that was interesting to you guys and it's helpful just to show you step by step and how you might be able to do it for your fireplace. Hope your next project turns out great. Join me next time for the next video. Bye guys.